Hello and welcome to my channel. Now in this vlog, we are going to be talking about trekking poles. Now I hope you're all feeling strong and well. I'm just taking you for a little walk in the woods today. I've been walking for about half an hour already and I've lost a little wrist strap that I connect my GoPro to my wrist with. And uh, I'm retracing my steps now. Uh, covered quite a lot of ground. So hopefully I'll find that during this vlog as well. So trekking poles, who needs trekking poles? I have seen people using trekking poles for years and always thought to myself that they're pretty pointless. So what changed my mind regarding trekking poles? Well, I do have a story for you a little bit later on in the vlog, but first of all, let's have a look at my purchase. I did a little bit of research, of course, and I found out that Black Diamond was a great uh, brand in walking poles, in trekking poles. So we're gonna have a quick look at the uh, trekking poles that I purchased. I'm just gonna show you one because I am only using one. I feel that I only need to use one. Amazing how much assistance just one gives you. So uh, the purchase was the uh, Trailback Black Diamond trekking poles. Now they weren't too expensive, they're about 60 quid. Quid, that is English money. Uh, yeah, about 60 quid and uh, you get what you pays for. So I went middle of the road. And they're made out of uh, aluminium, really lightweight aluminium with a great uh, quick locking system to adjust the height to the user. I still haven't found this uh, little bracelet that uh, I connect my GoPro to my wrist with. It's a little, uh, little strap, a little bit, uh, a little bit like this stuff. And I dropped it somewhere along the way into the woods. So yeah, like I say, I'm uh, retracing my steps and hoping to find that. Now, I think that the general rule of thumb with trekking poles is that you have your elbow at about 90 degrees to measure the correct distance to the floor. The ones that I bought have two collapsible sections, so it's really easy because they're calibrated on both sections. So I have mine set to about 135 centimeters, and that seems to work well for me. Now they do have a special flick lock, really easy to use flick locks on them and uh, they come pre-tensioned when you buy them but I do advise you to check them even though they might feel pretty sturdy, pretty tight. Um, one of mine wasn't and uh, it did actually push in on a recent walk. So do uh, check that your uh, flick locks are actually tensioned correctly. If you are setting the tension on your trekking poles, make sure you have the flick locks in the open position before you use the screwdriver. And that's all you've got to do then, just tweak that screw and test it, and then just lean on it and uh, make sure that it's tensioned correctly. These ones that I chose have a fantastic grip on them. I chose the rubberized grip, but it does absorb a lot of the moisture from your hand. It's called a dual grip system because uh, further down the shaft of the uh, trekking poles, there is a part where you can hold them lower down, a foam section. Now the very bottom part of the pole is called the basket. And uh, I've chosen to use the low profile baskets on the bottom of my poles. It does come with a wider one, a higher profile. And I think that's for, uh, for skiing. I won't be using that one. Now at the very bottom of the poles, there is a carbide tip, so that's very hard wearing. And uh, when it does eventually wear out, they are replaceable. You just unscrew them, purchase your new carbide tips, and you're good to go again. Now these trekking poles, as I said earlier, are very lightweight. They come in at 600 grams a pair, and I'm only using one. So it's only added 300 grams to my backpack. So if you clicked on this vlog just to uh, have a little look at the trekking poles that I purchased, that is it. But I've got a bit of a story for you as to why, why now? Why have I chosen to look at trekking poles now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd almost given up on that. Really glad that I found that little wrist strap for my GoPro. I can't find a suitable place to sit down and have a coffee. So I'm gonna tell you this little story on my way back. So yeah, about 10 years ago, I was uh, at Cannon Hall Farm. If you visit South Yorkshire, definitely visit Cannon Hall Farm, great place. So yeah, I was at Cannon Hall Farm, South Yorkshire, Barnsley and I decided whilst I was there with my daughter and her boyfriend Liam, I decided that I was going to race him from one tree to another. Let's just get under here. Oh, oh. don't you hate? 
<laughs> right. So yes, I decided I was going to race him from one tree to another. Now, let me just tell you, Liam was about 20 years old and I was about 40 years old, but I fancied my chances at uh, beating this uh, six foot uh, 20 year old. Now, I'm sure some of you can relate to this little story. And if you can, leave your comments in the comments section below if you've done something similar. So uh, I did have a plan to beat Liam because of course I did know that I was too old to beat him. So I decided that we would uh, race from that tree to that tree and back again. And my method in my madness was that I would lull him into a false sense of security by just pacing him. And uh, I knew that he would get a bit cocky and sort of slow down and take it easy. And then at the very last minute, the idea is that I would just pip him right at the post. And my plan worked an absolute treat. By the time we were on the last 30 meters, Liam was so relaxed and I knew that I was in striking distance. So I hit the nitrous oxide and uh, caught up with him. The gap was closed immediately and the tendon on the back of my left leg ripped away from the bone. After a split second of excruciating pain, I still felt that I could beat him. So I hit the nitrous oxide again. The next day, my leg was completely black all down the back of my left leg. And over the uh, next weeks, three or four weeks, it uh, changed into some weird and wonderful colors. Now I've got to say that my leg did heal quite quickly within about a month. I was back uh, jogging and running, just not racing people half my age. But what has that got to do with trekking poles, Rob? Well. The reason I'm telling you that story is because uh, that um, injury, that tendon tearing off the bone there uh, has come back to haunt me. And uh, when I get up to about 10 miles, if I do 10 miles walking, constant, no, no break, no stopping, um, the left leg does get tight and tired. It just makes it feel really tired. Uh, so I believe that it is what is called um, a short, short ligament now when you get sort of uh, severe damage like that when it repairs unless you get really high-end physio uh, you get a bit of a, a short ligament and that remains tight so it's a, a sort of a tight ligament doesn't affect me anywhere under 10 miles hence I am now using a walking stick a walking pole and that just um, that just helps me out. It just takes the edge off. Um, you can see the, uh, the walking pole on my backpack there. Uh, I haven't used it on this walk at all. I don't need it. Um, my leg is absolutely fine. And I'm gonna need that on the West Highland Way. So I'm practicing using them now. And I've got to say that once you've practiced using a walking stick, trekking pole, uh, yeah, they, they're really useful uneven terrain it just sort of supports your knee you've got something to lean on when you're going across a stream or boggy land really good for that really good so not only is it helping me with my uh, short tendon my tight tendon there i found them to be really useful so even if you haven't got an injury or your legs aren't tired or uh, or anything like that they're really really useful i would recommend using them just because and uh, start out just using one maybe uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's the story anyway, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Really good to be out with you again. And if you've got any comments on a similar story, have you done anything similar? Please put them comments in the comments section below. I upload vlogs every month, so if I don't see you through the month, I will see you in the next one. Bye.